Union County even. So again, deciding on your goals is going to affect um, you know, everything that you do from here on in. Another few words. While the goals of the organization and the goals of the user are not necessarily going to be the same, there should be a little bit of overlap. All right? You should be able to accommodate them both. Because either way, if you don't accommodate them both, your site isn't going to be very successful. Let's think, for example, you know, an easy one to talk about would be if we were creating a website for a band. One of my users' goals might be to get free music. All right? One of my organizational goals might be to sell music. Wow, those goals are exact opposite of each other. You know, the users want to get it for free, the organization wants to sell it. So how can you sort of accommodate both of those goals? Yes? Okay. Right. 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 And the statement was is you could do that a lot of ways. You could, for example, give uh, play samples of your music so people could get a sense of what, what it is, to, so you can try it and listen to it before, and a lot of sites do that. The other thing that you could do is you could give a limited number of freebies. For example, you can download this song for free, but to buy, you know, to the rest of them you have to purchase. Another thing that I've seen uh, folks do is you can stream it, but you can't download it. Um, which would be another, another possibility as well. So in that way, they're both satisfying their goals, right? People that want to go and investigate a band and find if they're a band that they like have the opportunity to hear it. And yet the band isn't, isn't giving away the farm for free, right? They're, they're, they're still selling things for, uh, a, a, you know, a, a certain amount. All right, so satisfy our goals. We want to define our goals, and we want to make sure that there's at least some overlap uh, between, between the goals. You know, ideally, a band, would, a band would like to charge for everything, all right? Ideally, a person would like to get everything for free. So you sort of find a middle ground and, and find a, a way it can work. So what are you going to do when you create your project? The, the, the project uh, is going to be created via a design document. And the design document serves two purposes. One is it's a document to sort of force you go, to go through the steps of planning the website before creating it. All right? Remember, um, one of my, one of my uh, statements that I make in, in just about all my classes is good work doesn't happen by accident. Good work isn't thrown together. Good work is planned. So the design document takes you through some planning steps, you know, takes you through a systematic set of steps. First you do this, then you do this, then you do that, all right? Because if I say the, the phrase, plan your website first, each one of you may come up with a different notion of how to do it, right? By giving you a document to create, by giving you a certain set of procedures, Given the fact that I've developed a bunch of websites and I've developed a bunch of other sorts of software, I sort of know the steps that you want to go through. So that's why I'm designing that and there'll be some consistency and uh, it, it is a, a technique that, that works. And this technique, again, is talked about a lot in the, the thinner of the two books, the Jesse James Garrett book. Now, that's one reason. You, you, you create a design document to plan it. Think of it like an architect drawing before they start going out and hammering boards together, right? It's a plan. It's something you think about before you go ahead and do. There's another reason for designing and documenting what you're going to do, and that is because you may have to share it with other people, all right? You may have, for example, a team of several developers that are working on this website. If it's a large website, you know, you, you might not do everything on it. You might have a team of developers that's going to create the website. 
Or you may be developing a website for someone else, either in your organization or maybe even outside of your organization. Maybe they bring you in as a consultant. Let's say I had a photography business and I didn't know anything about web development. I might go and hire one of you folks to develop a website for me. All right. Well, I would hate to, how do I want to put this? I would hate to tell you briefly what I meant, have you go away for three months, come back in three months and say, well, here's your website. I'm liable to look at it and say, that's not at all what I want. That's not very good. You know, I wanted it to do this and you did that. All right. So the documentation you provide make sure that shows that you understand the problem and communicates what you're planning on doing to everyone else. So it might be another developer that's helping you with this website, or it might be your client that's going to look at it and say, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Or, no, you know, that uh, I want to change around a little bit. I don't want it to look like that. I want to look, at, look like something else. There's a, a very famous graph in the world of software development that looks like this. And this is true from probably the day the first computer program was written. And it's still true now. All right. And the graph looks like this. And what this graph shows is the cost to change something about a piece of software. And again, I will include websites as a piece of software as compared to the phase of the project. In fact, this probably applies for projects other than software, right? Typically, you have the design phase, the build phase, the test phase, the implement phase, and what they call the maintenance phase. The design phase is where you're still sketching out your pages on paper. To make a change there, it's pretty easy. Right? Doesn't take, yeah, exactly. Think of an architect designing a house. If I say, gee, I want this room to be a little bit bigger, how easy is it for them to change the blueprint versus actually move a wall after it got built? All right? Much easier to change the blueprint as opposed to doing that. So, if you notice you math fans out there, not only does the price rise, it rises at an increasing rate. Positive first derivative, those of you that have taken math, I think, anyhow. All right? It's been a few years. All right? But yeah, positive first derivative, which means it's increasing at an increasing rate. So it's not only more expensive to, to, to uh, fix something the later on in the project it goes, it's it's even more, more expensive. That's increasing uh, the, the cost and it is skyrocketing. So what's the bottom line of this? Spend a lot of time in this phase and try to catch everything you can. Can you anticipate and, and catch every single possible mistake and change? Of course not, but you can at least try. So that's why we're creating this design document. The design, go ahead. Well, yeah, har harder translates to more expensive. So, in other words, if it is easy to change it, it won't take me much time. I can do it, and therefore the cost is less. If it's hard to do, it's going to take more time, more effort, translates into more cost. So, yeah, you, you could talk about it either different way, either harder or more expensive. Really, in, 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 in practice, those turn out to be really the same thing. You know, time is money, as they say. <laughs> All right, let's look at the semester project, what I want from you in the design document. This design document has five stages to it, five steps. And these correspond to chapters in the Jesse James Garrett book. We'll talk about each of these. I don't know if we'll get through all of them today, but we'll get through most of them today, and, uh, or at least some of them today. Um, and we'll, we'll polish off the rest of them on Thursday. The first section is called the strategy section. If this is a true statement, 
that a website is good when the users and the organization can easily achieve their goals regarding the site, then the implication of that is you better know what those goals are, right? Now, you might look and say, well, gee, that's obvious, but not all things that people think are obvious are obvious, all right? There can be many goals for people visiting a site, and there can be many different kinds of people that are visiting the site, and they may all have their different reasons. Let's go back and talk about the website for our band, all right? What are some examples of different kinds of people that could be visiting our band's website? Yeah. Yeah. New fans or, or maybe people that might become fans. In other words, my brother knows the kind of music that I like, so he may tell me, you might like this band. All right? I'll go check them out. That's one kind of user that's going to be visiting the site. Another kind. Okay, publishers? How so? Okay. Maybe recording companies, club owners, you know, depending on the level of band that you're talking about. Someone writing, you know, someone making a movie that might need a soundtrack. So, potential employers of this band, you know, the, again, depending whether you're talking about, you know, a, a top tier band or a local band, you know, someone that might want to hire them for a wedding, someone that might want to hire them for a club, someone that might want whatever. So, that would be another category of people that might be visiting the site. What would be another, yes? Well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it, it's, it's possible, at least, that, that they could, uh, if they were looking for musicians to, to join their band, they could use their website to recruit musicians, and you might want to see what you're getting into. Yes? People that are already fans of the band. Right. In other words, you know, I know I already like such and such band, but I want to see, do they have a new record coming out? Are they going to appear in the, in the neighborhood? Um, are, are there any interviews with them, and so on? Another, can anyone think of another category? I, I have at least one in my head. I would say members of the press, all right? A lot of times on websites, you'll see, uh, for bands, you'll see EP, EPKs, EPKs, electronic press kits. And what they'll have is, let's say a certain musician is playing in Cleveland this weekend. Well. The plane dealer isn't going to go down and send a photographer to take a picture of them. They're going to go and they're going to download from their website, and they'll have permission to do so, the photo and include that photo if, if they want one. All right? So the point is, is that um, these different categories of users can themselves have different goals. All right? Because of that, we don't want to talk about the user. That's a mistake that, that really, when I first read the Jesse James Garrett book and it talked about the personas in, in the strategy section, I thought that that was kind of hokey and I thought that was kind of lame. All right? What the personas are, and again, I encourage you to read through the book. I'll just give a summary. But what the personas are is you make up some fictional people as representative of the people that are going to be visiting your website. So, if I was doing this website for a band, I might make up Carl, that is a someone that likes the style of music that my band plays and is interested to see if they're going to like this band. I might make up Anne, who is a, a diehard fan, has been listening to them since their first record, and so on down the line. You know. Mike is a journalist for the Cleveland Plain Dealer and wants to get some background information for an article that, that he's writing. All right? So you make up these personas that are representative of the typical users that are going to be visiting there. Now, really, in reality, everyone visiting the site is liable to have their own goals. Right? But we can't create a website for 7 billion people. All right? 
But we can do better than saying there's one kind of person that's going to be visiting our site and this is what they're looking for. And that's the whole point of the personas. We decide on different kinds of people that are going to be visiting their site and identify what their goals are. All right. At this point, we're defining goals. We're not talking about what we're going to put on, on the site. All right. That'll come in the next stage. For example, for a new fan or a potential fan, uh, one of the goals might be, find out if I like this band or not. All right? Find out if I like this band or not. Now, there's a lot of things that you could put on the website that could maybe help the person decide that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that's not part of the strategy phase, deciding how we're going to help that person find out if they like the band. We're just going to identify that as a goal. All right? And we'll do that, again, for all the different categories of people. We will also do that for our organization, for, for our band. In other words, what does a band want to get out of the site? Does it want to get merchandise sales out of the site? Does it want to expand its fan base? Does it want to attract uh, club owners to, to contact the band and hire them? Does it want to, get, uh, does it want to play weddings? You know, what does a band want to get out of it? So, in the first stage of the project, what you do is you write a paragraph or so, a couple paragraphs, that describes, just in very general terms, the purpose of your site. You know, this doesn't have to be pages, just, you know, a couple lines or two. Then, you'll come up with a prioritized list of three of your goals for this project. Now, in, in this particular document, when I say your goals, think of the organization's goals, right? Because there's not an organization that you're creating this for. You're sort of playing the role of the organization and the web developer, all right? And then a prioritized list of the three user goals that this project would address. You can have more than three, right? I just pick three because I don't want just one. I'm just giving you a sense of how many. You know, if you had five, that would be fine as well. You actually could have several goals for each of the personas. All right? And then you'll create three personas that are people that are representative of um, your user group. That's the strategy section, right? There's an old saying, you know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. All right? What does that mean if you don't have a clear vision of what your goal is for the site and what your user's goal is for the site, you're liable to design anything. It's interesting. You definitely see, in, in my opinion, you see better websites now than you did, say, 10 years ago. All right? 10 years ago, it was almost like a form of corporate peer pressure. Right? It's like all these companies have a website, I better have one too. So companies rushed out and made websites without really thinking through what, what they wanted out of the, uh, the website, what their users would want out of the website, and so on. As a result, I think a lot of those websites were not very successful. All right? And I think over time, just you know, survival of the fittest, you know, um, websites have evolved where you don't really see these kinds of issues to the degree that you do. You still find whatever her name is, bridal site, which I gotta think is a joke, but maybe not, I don't know. You still occasionally find the really horrible website, but most websites nowadays are, are, are bad in a little more subtle ways, <laughs> all right? And I think one part of the reason is people are, are realizing, gee, we don't just need to build a website. We need to build a website with some certain clear ideas of what our goals are in mind. Uh, I don't recall seeing that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope not. Um, 
so that's the strategy phase. That's the first phase. The second phase is called the scope. Here's where you decide what you're going to do to help achieve those goals. All right. Now, I recognize that there's a subtle difference here. But your goal should be viewed as goals. What does the user want to get out of the site? The scope, the requirement should be what you're going to put on the site to help these users achieve their goals. For example, let me show you the difference between a goal and a requirement. For our hypothetical band site, the goal for the user could be to find out if I like this band. This might be one of our goals among a lot of other goals. Now, what are some things that we could do to help that user achieve that goal? Help that user find out if they like the band. Okay. One would be to provide audio clips. All right. Number two, what's another thing we could do? Yeah. We could possibly include pictures. How would that help? Yeah, right. For one thing, you could you might get an idea of, of the kind of music that someone plays based on how they look. You see a uh, you see a bunch of guys in in uh, you know in boots and jeans and cowboy hats. You might get the idea that they play country. You see folks looking another way. You might get the idea that they uh, play classical or whatever. So, yeah, that could. I wouldn't say that that's the best way to do it, but that could be something that you could do that would help achieve that goal. Okay. It could work the other way, too. You could look at the band and that could, that could, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you look and say, well, you know, um, you know, I, you know, th th this kind of thing doesn't look like it appeals to me, you know. Other things that we could do besides audio clips and pictures, yes. Okay, yeah, videos. Either live or recorded videos. Let me just come up with a couple other things. We could come up with some full songs to download. Could have lyrics. Very good. I didn't even think of that one. We could have, um, I just, I had one on the tip of my tongue, streaming music. And we could have reviews. If I know that I like band A and I'm on band B's website and I see a review that says, wow, this band's just as good as band A, that's liable to influence me to look further. So that's the goal. These are the requirements. In, in, you know, in military and in business, they talk about the difference between strategy and tactics. Strategy is what you want to achieve. Tactics are the steps you're going to take to get there. Same idea here. Goal and requirement. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Three things to keep in mind. There's always, or, or, I don't want to say always, there, there is usually more than one way that could help the user achieve their goal or help the organization achieve their goal. All right? So it's not necessarily just a one thing. There could be multiple requirements. Second thing to realize is really each requirement could actually help users different or, or how do I want to say this? Each requirement could help 
satisfy several different goals. For example, the live video clip. That might help one person as a new fan decide if they like the band or not. For someone that's already a hardcore fan, they might want to see a live video clip. You know, that might, might enjoy seeing that. So it might actually satisfy, one individual requirement might actually satisfy several different goals. All right? Now, here's the last part. Part of the act of designing is figuring out what to put in and what to leave out. Right? Um, for example, you know, going back to our favorite bridal site, there might have been someone that said, you know, if we put this on the page, it's going to be great. If we put this on the page, it's going to be great. And all of a sudden, they have a page with like 50,000 links to different places, and they're all blinking, and they're all, you know, different colors and so on. More is not always better. More can be distracting, right? If more distracts the user and makes it harder for them to find what they want, then more isn't necessarily better. All right. So, just because you can do or could do all these things, and each of these things may legitimately help satisfy this or maybe other goals, but you want to decide on what's going to do it with the most impact. All right. And what is the most essential? And again, where on the line we want to be between simple too detailed, boring, too chaotic. All right? That really is the act of design, is, is choosing, making these choices. But in order to make these choices intelligently, you first have to def define what those goals are. Right? Then you can start talking about what you can put on the page to satisfy, and then you can start narrowing it down. Like, well, you know what? I think that we're not going to allow them to download a one song because what if we pick one song and they don't like that specific song. Let's give them audio clips. Let's include a picture. We don't have any good live videos. We don't have the technology on our server to stream. So maybe we'll provide audio clips, pictures, and lyrics. And maybe that will be sufficient in satisfying it. So again, that is a key part of web design. Not the colors of the page. Yeah, that's important, but that comes later on down the line. This, to me, is the heart of web design. Someone that can understand what the goals are of the organizations and the users, and then decide what they can put on the site to help satisfy the goals. Now, if you're working on this in a, in a team environment, you know you bounce things off of each other, or if you're working with a client. You come up with some ideas and, and you talk with them and, and do that. In this particular exercise, you sort of have to wear a couple different hats. You have to do this. But you always have me to bounce ideas off of as well, a, a, as well as your classmates. All right. Um, being able to do this, you, this is something you'll get better at over time. Right? It's a skill to understand businesses and understand marketing and all that. That's why you don't just take web development classes if you're studying to be a web developer. You take a lot of other classes too that relate to business and whatever because you're developing these websites in some context to satisfy someone's goals and needs. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today, usually this is what I do. I get through the first two, uh, the first day, and then we sort of get through the last three fairly quickly. But the one thing I want to point out to you that you should take a look at if you have not already is I have, and, and you couldn't have possibly looked at it because I hid it until now, there's a sample plan. All right. What I did is uh, a lot of students were not really sure about what their stuff should look like, so I came up with a sample for a project.
and I went through four of the five steps. I get to go through only four of the five steps because I'm the teacher. And I graded myself, and I said, you know what, Mike, we'll let you slide on that last step. I'm not likely to do the same for you, so you need to do all five steps. All right? I believe it or not, I have gotten people that have copied my thing verbatim and said, I'm not going to create a prototype. No, you are going to create a prototype. I'm not going to create a prototype. All right? The first couple sections, again, here I'm defining sort of an overview of my site. I'm doing a site on the legends of jazz music. A little bit of an overview of why I'm creating the site. What my goals are in creating the site. And what the users that are visiting my site, what their goals are going to be. I then have three personas. Where I've made up a little blurb about each one of them. And they're meant to be representative of the kinds of people that I see visiting my site. And then I have the list of requirements where I said, okay, if these are my goals, what can I put on the site to help the people satisfy those goals? And I came up with a list of things. We'll talk about this document more next time, but before next time, take a few minutes to, if you have not already, review the assignment about the design document and review my sample. And we'll pick up uh, on this next time. All right.